Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to my Sewing for Beginners series. Now in this video we're going to be chatting about needles. What needles should you be using on your sewing machine? We're going to be discussing different needle sizes and different types of needles that you can use for your projects, depending on the fabric and thread that you're using. Now you're going to want to begin by choosing a quality needle manufacturer. I generally work with Schmetz needles and I think they're fabulous, I've never had any problems with them, so would recommend them. Now most of the time you're going to want to use what's called a universal needle, so an everyday standard needle. And this will work with the majority of projects and fabrics that you're working on. However, you do still need to make sure that you're using the right size needle for the fabric that you're working with. A standard needle size is what's called a 9014 or an 8012. Now I'm listing both the metric and imperial numbers there. 90 and 80 are the metric numbers, 12 and 14 are the imperial numbers. And most needle manufacturers list both numbers on their packaging. And you'll see here that you can purchase the universal needles in a one size only pack or a mixed pack. Now an 8012 or a 9014 are suitable for medium weight fabrics. So medium weight cottons, linens, those kind of fabrics. This fabric here is a cotton and I would probably use an 8012 with this. My dress is made from a cotton sateen and probably either an 8012 or a 9014 would have been fine with that. The key is always to test. Test the fabric in your machine with the settings that you want to do the tension that you think is correct, and the thread that you're going to be using prior to making the final garment or product, just so that you can check you're using the right needle for the job. So what happens if you want to work with a lightweight fabric? Perhaps you're picking up a silk chiffon or a silk georgette. Then you need to choose a smaller needle size. And the numbers decrease. So for a smaller needle size, you could try 7511, a 7010, a 65.9 or a 68. The smaller the number, the finer the point of the needle. For example, I have got a crepe back satin silk here. And for this, I probably could try a 70, maybe a 70.11, something like that. And as I said, it is going to be about testing it. But you're going to want to decrease the size of the needle for how lightweight the fabric is. And the same applies when you're going in the opposite direction. So if you choose to work with a very heavyweight fabric, perhaps you're making something out of an upholstery weight fabric or a very thick denim, then you're going to need to increase the size of the needle. A 116 or 110 18. This is an example of some upholstery fabric and I'm planning on using this for covering some chairs. Obviously, I'm going to need to use a larger size needle, a universal needle, and I probably will jump probably straight to 110.18. I might try a 116 first, but it's going to need to be a large needle because it's quite a thick fabric. So what happens if you use the wrong needle for the job? If you're working with a needle that is too large for the project, you will find that the needle point catches on the fibres or weave of the fabric. Often students will come to me and they'll say, my tension's wrong. And more often than not, it's because they're using the wrong needle for the job. The needle is either too large, it's perhaps not the right needle for the job, maybe it's blunt and they need to replace it. But you do want to check that you're using a nice sharp needle for your project and that it's fine enough for the fabric that you're working with. You can see on this fabric here, I'm using a needle that is much too large and it doesn't really look that bad, but you can see it is catching ever so slightly if I tilt that in the light. So I will be better off with a much smaller needle. In case you're interested, I'm only using a 9014 with this, but with this Habite silk, I would probably use a 65.9 or a 70.10. It's all about testing it on your machine and finding out what works for the fabric and thread that you're using. 
Now on the other end of the spectrum, if you use a needle that's too small for the job, then the needle could break. So you do need to be cautious of that too. As I said, your everyday needle sizes are going to be 80, 12, 90, 14. So that's what you'll be using most of the time. So now you know about needle sizes, let's take a look at some different types of needles fabric and threads, and the reason why you might have to choose to work with a different type of needle. Let's begin by looking at jersey, jersey or knitted fabrics. Now this is what I'd call, it's almost a lightweight jersey um, or knitted fabric, and with this fabric you're going to need to be careful. Now whenever you're working with a jersey or knitted fabric, no matter how heavy weight it is, you need to make sure that you are working with a jersey needle. They're sometimes called jersey, they're sometimes called ballpoint. Now the main difference with these kind of needles is that the point of the needle is a ballpoint rather than a sharp point that you'll find on a universal needle. If I was to go and sew my lovely knit here with a universal needle, I might find that the point of the needle would actually catch the knit. So fabrics when they're knitted together can be knitted very, very tightly, very sort of closely together and you'll find that the point of a universal needle can accidentally cut the knit. When you sew the seam, you could find when the fabric or knitted fabric was to stretch that a hole would start appearing and it would almost start running like a pair of tights. Therefore, you need to make sure that you're working with a jersey or ballpoint needle. This needle, as I said, has a ballpoint, so it parts the knit instead of accidentally cutting it. And that's really important to make sure that you're using the right needle for the job there. They will again come in different sizes, so you do need to select the right size for the correct weight of fabric that you're working with. Just so you know, for this fabric, I probably would have gone for a 70-10 or a 75-11. Again, it's all about testing it and checking it. Moving on, what happens if you're working with a jersey or knitted fabric like this, but you're finding that the machine is skipping stitches, it's missing stitches. You've checked the tension, everything else is correct, but you're struggling with these skipped stitches. In that case, I often pick up a stretch needle instead. Now a stretch needle is very similar to a ballpoint or jersey needle. It still has the ballpoint tip but there is a little bit of difference on the sort of scarf, which is the long part of the needle, which helps it to work with slightly stretchier fabrics. And I have found it will help to prevent any of those skip stitches. Obviously another use for stretch needles is going to be your super stretchy fabrics, something like this. Fabrics that you might use in swimwear, in leotards, in lingerie, those kind of things. Now this fabric is a milliskin, it's made from, it's a milliskin mat, and it's made from spandex and nylon. So it's got quite a lot of stretch for it, and I'm planning on probably making a bra or something like that from it. But with this fabric, I'm going to need that stretch needle. Stretch needles are also fantastic at working with elastic or sewing elastic as well. Again, make sure that you're using the right size needle for the weight of fabric that you're working with. Now as well as having needles designed for stretch fabrics, needles are also designed for leather and denim. Now this is a leather pig suede and whether you're working with real leather or artificial fake leather, you may find that you need to use a leather needle. Now I'll be honest, I do not use a leather needle when I sew with this pig suede. Um, I would say this is relatively sort of medium weight when it comes to leather, so I find that I can use my universal needles absolutely fine. However, I will pick up my leather needles when I'm working with very thick leather. Um, anything much thicker than this, perhaps if I'm using like a calf suede or something, I will find that my sewing machine will struggle a little bit more. So using the leather needle will help. Now a leather needle has a wedge shape on the bottom, so it will actually cut the leather or help to cut and penetrate the leather. Obviously, whenever you're working with leather, you've got to remember that you are cutting a hole, so you do need to be cautious about where you are sewing and try not to make any mistakes. If you're sewing lots of denim or jeans, you may wish to invest in some jeans or denim needles. These again have a slight ball point to the eye, which will help to prevent them from catching any of the denim fibers whilst you're sewing. 
They are also slightly reinforced, helping them to sew through the thicker denim fabric and to prevent any skip stitches or any breakages. Moving on, another type of needle that I often use is what's called a Microtex needle. Now, Microtex needles have a very small, sharp point. They're perfect for fabrics that are very densely or closely woven, such as microfiber. Generally, I find that I use these if I'm working with perhaps a lightweight fabric and I'm sewing, I've chosen a small needle size, but I'm still having problems where the needle is almost catching the fabric it looks like it's sort of picking or puckering up the threads or fibers. That's when I pick up a Microtex needle and you should find that it will help to solve the problem. As well as considering the fabric that you're working with, you also need to consider the thread. Now, perhaps you're wanting to do some top stitching onto a garment and this thread is much thicker than the standard thread that you're using. You therefore need to make sure that you get a top stitching needle. Top stitching needles have a larger eye, which will stop the thread from breaking or shedding. And shedding is when the thread sort of, the layers of thread start to come off. And you'll find a bit of a build up at this part of the machine here. That's because the thread is struggling through the eye of the needle, or perhaps it's catching onto something else. And that can cause you a problem, obviously. So you need to make sure that you're working with a top stitching needle. Top stitching needles are also great for other decorative uses and sometimes I'll use them when perhaps I have two different threads at the top of my machine, two different colours and I'm putting them both through the same eye of the needle and that's a sort of decorative stitch. Now you can also purchase double eyed needles which are very useful for that if you want to have two different colour threads and get a bit decorative with your stitching. There's two eyes in the double eyed needles so one thread can go in each of those eyes and you'll have a great decorative stitch. As well as top stitching thread you're also going to want to consider if you're doing any embroidery. If you're doing a lot of embroidery it's worthwhile purchasing some embroidery needles. These are designed for embroidery threads so again you'll have less problems with friction or with the thread shedding or breaking. The same goes for any sort of metallic threads. You can again purchase metallic needles and they're designed to work with the high friction that you get from metallic threads, preventing any thread breakages, any thread shedding, anything that's going to sort of ruin your project. Finally, you may want to consider purchasing some twin or triple needles. These can be used for decorative purposes. I often use a twin needle. These come in universal or in ballpoint or jersey. And I use the ballpoint or jersey one for doing fake cover stitch hems on jersey items. I will film a tutorial on this and I'll pop a link to that here. So really there are such a great variety of needles that are available. The key is making sure that you're using the right needle for the project that you're working with and the right size. Generally speaking, your universal needle is going to do most jobs, but if you're wanting to work with jersey or ballpoint, you do need to make sure that you're purchasing a specific ballpoint needle. The same applies if you get into doing lots of embroidery and things like that, you will find that you have less problems working with an embroidery specific needle. The final thing is to talk about how often you need to be changing your needle and this is a very difficult question to answer because needle manufacturers will say that after so many hours you need to replace the needle. However, how many of us actually clock the number of hours that we're on the sewing machine for? So I've always been told that it's best practice to replace the needle with every new project that you start. But then obviously it's over to your judgment in terms of how long you've spent on that project. So if you've you know, only spent an hour sewing a very small item, you might not need to replace the needle. But if you've spent 20 hours sewing a jacket, then you definitely will. So it's really over to you, have a little think and make sure when you do decide to remove the needle and dispose of it, that you dispose of it safely. Thanks for watching, I really hope that I've been able to help clarify what needle you should be using and when.